stand for his word, and that's what you want to hear, even when it rocks your jaws a little bit. Right. Nothing wrong with that, because none of us is perfect. We all fail, we all come up short, and when you think you're above the word, you're in trouble. Thank God for America. Here we do believe in taking a knee, but when you're praying, preacher, don't be political. I'm not. I'm telling you, though, the, the flag still stands for freedom. We are a God-blessed nation. We in trouble. Uh, it still ain't it good to see God's mighty hand work. Please take time to give credit for who done what over the last couple of weeks. I know some folk don't like it, but tough luck, said the duck, tough cookie, however you want to say it. We don't expect devilish people to like good things anyhow. Thank God we went at least once in the right direction. I told you two years ago to look out for it. Now we got a chance to fix some of this other stuff. Who knows, men might be marrying women again before too long. Who knows, we might get some of these big boys off the girls' swimming team. To let women play women in tennis. Right. Who knows? We might actually... God can do what God chooses to do. But it's going to take the church to wake up. America goes as the church goes. That's right. That's exactly right. When God's people rebel against God, God will rebel against yes, us. When you neglect God, God will neglect you. Yes, when you forsake God, God will forsake you. Yes, when you pay God no attention, God will pay you no attention. And if the church turns its back on God, God will turn its back on the church. But if the church seeks God, then God will be found. If the church turns to God, then God will meet with the church. If the church reaches out to God, God will reach back to the church. So let us be much in prayer. All right, here we go. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, the second verse. Preach the word. All right, that's enough. You, you're not going to find a more simple statement in the Bible and preach the word. Amen. But why in the world is it so complicated today? Uh, you got folk don't know what to believe and who to believe and how to believe. We even got church folk trying to still figure out how to get to heaven. Something ain't right somewhere. I saw a program the other night, some Bible scholars, folk that had initials in front of their name and after their name, some of them, had their names on the door and leather chairs and big pretty tables. Uh, no, he was missing. They were sitting around the table having a meeting trying to figure out if a flood actually came and uh, did Moses actually cross the Red Sea? And all of them had a Bible in their hand, but said it can't be the way it's wrote in there. Preach the word. By seminary school, there is four types of sermons or four ways to preach. They call one topical. Basically, you pick a topic and get scripture to go with it. One's called uh, uh, expository. In other words, you take the verse and just preach nothing but on the verse. 
Some's called narrative. That means you tell a story in the Bible like David and Goliath or Daniel and the lions did. But he said preach the word. If you're telling a story or you're reading a verse, you, you need to be preaching the word. But what does that mean? The other day, somebody said something and they meant it for an insult. But it was actually a blessing. Here's what they said. Christians are simple-minded people. Now, I know what Webster said. I actually study. Uh, I know to be simple-minded by definition means that you lack the ability to reason or understand. That's in English. But in the Bible, to be simple-minded in the Lord means that you're focused and you're not divided in your mind. It means that you have a sound mind. In fact, it means that you have just one single thing on your mind and it's not overcomplicated. Now I'm going to do something today with God's help and I want you to turn to John 1.3. I'm going to preach to you a very simple message. The reason that we preach the Bible, that we preach the Word, and the reason that it's so wonderful is because the Bible actually is very simple. It's me and you that make it complicated. Let me help you. Uh, Oprah and them had and Jake's and Three, four a dollar, or whatever who they are, and that one over there in Los Angeles, and they had a big get together to try to figure out how many ways you can get to heaven. And everybody had an opinion and had a thought. When they got through talking about it, nobody knew what to believe. But it could have been handled very simple. Somebody could have got out this book. Could have turned to John 3.16. Could have read for God so loved the world. Could have went on down to John 3.17 and said, uh, for God came not another way. Uh, well, they could have went over there to John 14.6 and read that Jesus Christ saith unto them that I am. You see, it would have simply been handled right fast, quick, in a hurry. Right, right. Yeah, but preacher, not everybody would have believed it. Well, does it matter? You ain't got to believe this book, but it don't mean you can change the book. Right. You ain't got to believe in a place called Calvary, but it means you can't change a place called Calvary. The Bible's not written and consists based on your belief. The Bible exists whether you believe it or not. So I'm going to show you 10. And believe it or not, I believe we'll get to all 10. I'm going to show you 10 simple things out the Bible. And I pray that it will be one of the most simplest messages that you ever have heard because the Bible actually is simple. I'm going to prove it to you. That book is so deep. You can study 30, 40, 50 hours a week. You can study till your head hurts. And then when you get through, realize you ain't even scratched the surface. Then you got to start all over. Do it again the next week. And when 40 years have went by, somebody asks you how much you know by the Bible, you say, well, the more I find out, the more I realize I don't know. 
For 30 some years of my life, I have poured my brain and heart and soul in this word. And I feel today that there is so much that I don't know. I, I wonder, Lord, when I die, how much is there going to be that I've not touched, that I've not figured out, that I've not even got, I've not even scratched. I mean, I heard that if it was just wrote down what you've done, that there ain't enough books in the world to contain who you are. I heard that you stepped out on nothing and hung the earth where nothing was to hang and told it to stay there. I heard that you came from nowhere because there was nowhere for you to come from. How in the world can I understand a God that can't be understood? How can I explain a God that is beyond Beyond explanation, but then again, it's so simple. A grown man, a grown woman can study and realize that they'll never conquer this world. But then again, it can be so simple. I've watched five year olds and six year olds. And seven year old, I almost stepped on one right here one Sunday morning. Already four or five folk got saved that morning, and I didn't see that little young and laying on the floor. I almost stepped on her. I backed up and I looked down at her tears running down her face. Got down on my knees beside her, figured I'd keep it simple. I said, uh, can I help you pray? Is there something you up here praying about? Can I help you? Is there something you want, young girl? Tears running down the face. Said, I want to be saved. I want Jesus to forgive me. Well, it was so simple. I said, well, praise the Lord. You done and got it. I, hey, I want to. That's how simple it is, church. You can understand the abomination of desolation. There ain't a thing wrong with that. If you want to study and tell Joe and the Zechariah and back up to Zebediah and visit Obadiah, that's all right. If you want to know about how this ties into that, there ain't a thing wrong with that. But don't you dare forget that the Bible is the simple word of God. It is so simple a child can understand it. It'll get you from hell and get you to heaven. God's word is the most complex but yet the most simple book that there'll ever be in mankind. Now, ten things. And if it ain't simple, I'll resign today and you won't have to worry with me no more. I promise you, it'll be simple. John 1, 3. All things. Have we got any problems so far? All things. Anybody know what that means? Are you sure it don't mean most of it? What's wrong with y'all? Why can't it mean most of something? Can I be like ivory soap and be 99.9 things? What does that mean? All things. I'm trying to be simple this morning. How many things? All things. Last night, I made my head sick. While I was studying, I decided to get on the Google. I like to Google some crazy questions sometimes just to see what somebody will say. Y'all know what I Google? Where I come from? I, I sure did. I, I asked that old computer, can you tell me where I came from? And I read how that the homo sapien got long lost eight uh, cousins and nephews and uh, we evolved the this and come to find out there was five more monkey bloods that we carried. And I, I said, Lord have mercy, I should have Googled something else. And I want to tell you, sir, when I got through reading it, I didn't even understand what they said, only to say that I came from a monkey. 
And while I was sitting there, I didn't even have to turn. But then I thought about Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. All things were made by Him. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Is that simple enough for you this morning? I don't want to get too complicated now. I don't want to throw words out there that long where we, and y'all got to read a dictionary while I'm preaching. I want to keep this simple for you. Can I read that to you again? All things were made by Him. Where I came from, that tells me that everything that I've ever seen, felt, tasted, heard, or felt in any way, anything that has ever been or ever will be, was made by the hand of God Almighty. And without Him was not anything made that was made. How many of y'all made a paycheck last week? You didn't even make that without him. I wish somebody would help me preach in this church. How many of you made a biscuit last week or a cake last week? Well, you didn't make it without him. How many of you made it to this church this morning? Well, you didn't make it without him. He said there was nothing made that was made without him. Nothing. Y'all thought I was talking about mountains and, and brims and sticks. He said nothing. You ever sit on your front porch and just made the day or made the evening? Uh, you ever got on your lawnmower and made the grass look pretty? Am I talking to anybody in here? How many of y'all ladies ever made a batch of cookies? You, you ever held a baby and made it quit crying? You ever lay down in the bed and made yourself go to sleep? I heard if you count the sheep, you, you'll fall right out. But I want to tell you that there was nothing made that has ever been made that was made uh, without Him. Uh, and I want to tell you it is as simple as a child can understand. Every time you see a rock, God made it. Uh, when you see the sunlight, God made it. Uh, when you see a sparrow flying, uh, God made it. Uh, when you see your pinky finger, God made it. Uh, when you see a man, God made it. Uh, when you see a dog, God made it. Uh, when you see the star, the moon, anything. And those things that you can't see. You see that air I'm breathing? I can't. Uh, but God made it. Uh, I want to tell you there had been nothing that will ever come into this world that God Almighty did not design and create. Oh, thank It's as simple as if you can taste it, God made it. If you can feel it, God made it. Heard somebody trying to be clever one time. Talked about building that man contest with God. Foolish enough to think that man could design man better than what man is designed. Well, how are you going to get started? Well, we'll get the dust and the dirt and get started. Well, there ain't but one problem. Well, what's the problem? I said, what are you going to tell God when you scoop up a five-gallon bucket of dirt to go over yonder and make your man? And God walk up and say, hey, you need to get your own dirt 
That was mine. I, I, what are you going to do? You, you got to make dirt before you make man. I mean, God ain't got to have something to make something. God steps out on nothing and makes something. If something existed before God, then that would be God. But the God I serve, he came before time. He came before place. He came before event. He is God above all and through all. And he never began. He's always been. He'll never end. For he always God. He's the only one that can walk forwards, walk backwards, and stand still at the same time. He is the only one that can be late but still be on time. He is the only one that can be standing there and still be outnumbered but never be out good. He's God. He didn't need help creating. I get amazed at folk. Some of y'all pray like God needs your help. None of you. I might as well go to the house. I'm going to try that again. Some of y'all pray like God needs your help on how to figure it out. Now, God, if you don't make it go this way, it definitely ain't going to work. God, I've done and got it worked out in my mind how it's got to go. And if you don't see it going that way, you, uh, you panic just a little. <laughs> I guess only one of us. I'm going to try it again. Now, if you see it going how you think it ought to go, uh, Mark, you're feeling good now. I'm rolling, boy. I'm praying this thing's working right. But let it go how you don't expect it to go. How many of y'all know that God don't need your help in figuring out how to do something? And sometimes he'll do it in a way that don't make no sense. But it'll still work anyhow. I remember when that man dropped his axe head in the water. He needed that thing back. He borrowed it. He didn't have no money to replace it. He was dead broke. That's why he borrowed it to begin with. And then it fell in that old muddy Jordan. Right on down in the mud. And he ran up to the man of God and said, Hey! That thing was borrowed. He said, well, we might as well get it back for you. How are we going to get that thing back? We got a rope. We got one of them magnets tying a string and drop it down there. I'll hold you by your leg, drop you in the water. No, uh, uh, that man of God, he said something just crazy. It still don't make no sense to me. Go get me a stick. All right. Man of God, I'll go get you a stick. Then the story gets even crazier. Man of God, I got this stick now. What do you want me to do with it? I want you to throw it in the water. I know how y'all are. Some of y'all would like to have a little talk with Elisha at this point. You'd like to ask him, he said, uh, Sir, did you not hear what I just said? Do you know that I said I lost my axe head and it's in the water? Some of y'all would have done that. In fact, some of y'all would have blowed air out while you went to get the stick. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. If y'all would help me, I might preach. At our house, we got a lot of air breathers, and I'm one of them. Huh? Uh, you can tell when somebody's aggravated at our house. You can tell when I'm aggravated. You can tell when I don't want to be talked to at my house. I can tell when her and everybody in that line right there, I, I can tell. You can say something. <laughs> huh? They can say something. <laughs> Walking in the kitchen. <laughs> Walking in the living room. <laughs> Laying in the bed. I'm telling you, we're blowing air all the time at the house because of what was said. This man said, throw that stick in the water. And he did. 
Then that that was in the water did not float to the top. It swam. I got a problem with that. My mind cannot figure out how a stick made an axe swim from the bottom to the top. And I know it messed that man up too because Elisha said, well, just don't stand there and pick it up. Do you know why Elisha had to tell him to pick it up? Because he was not expecting that thing to come, hello, somebody. He wasn't expecting that axe head to swim right out to the top. And Elijah said, well, pick it up. I want to tell you something about God. He is so great. He is so awesome. He is so powerful. He don't need nothing from you I heard somebody say God needs me God don't need you I heard a preacher say God needs preachers to preach God could put a monkey a rock a Holstein cow a talking donkey. He can put a, a line. He can put an angel. Or he can just walk here himself. God can speak it to your heart. He can have the moon yell it out to you. I want to tell you, God Almighty has, now watch out, this is going to sting a little bit. Uh, God has never, nor will he ever in any way, shape, form, or fashion need your advice, need your help, need your support, or need you in any way. Uh, but you'll never go through anything in life uh, that you don't need God Almighty on. For you need him in everything. To walk, to talk, to get up, to sit down, to lay down, to eat, to drink, to live. You need God. But God has never needed you. Preacher, that hurts my feelings. Well, good. Welcome to new life. You don't need to walk in here thinking you're somebody. That's why churches can't have church today. Everybody thinks they're somebody. Ah, hello. Somebody's in trouble. I didn't study this part. Hey, some folk are walking to church. Whose car is that out here? Man, where do we park in my spot out there? Let me know who I am. Well, Lord have mercy. I got to sit over here. Somebody's in my seat, though. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else. I want to know who's in charge of that thermostat over there. You are. It ought to be on. I mean, we ought to set that thing where I want it. Y'all don't need it. Yes, Lord. Who picked the color of this car? Y'all didn't ask me what my favorite color was? I want to tell you something. When you walk in the church and you think you're somebody, God Almighty can't use you. Uh, I hear something. You got to walk in the church the way he said to walk in the church. God told you and I how to go to church. He said, when you come through my gates, come with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that I'm even able to walk through the door of your house. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings that you've poured in my life, that you have given me. Thank you, Lord, for sparing me, for giving me hope, for giving me joy, for giving me peace. Thank you, Lord, for the food that I've eaten this drink, the water that I drank this week. Thank you for the clothes on my back. When is the last time you got out a sheet of paper? To cut off your television. Put your phone down. I better be careful with that because some of you can't live without your phone. I don't know where my amen went on that. If you think I'm scared, you don't know me. I'm going to say it where you can hear me. 
Some of you can't leave the house without your telephone. Why the amens out in this church? Some of you can't walk out of your front door without your telephone. But you'll walk out the door not even thinking about Jesus. Some of you, you're like you got an itch all day. I work with a man have one of them side pockets on his face. We'd be in a conversation. I, y'all laugh, I'm telling you the truth. We'd be talking about something. Over all day long, I finally asked, what in the world going on with your britches? Y'all laughing, I'm not being cute. He said, I didn't know if my phone might have run. We live in a day where folk can't live without their phone, but have no problem living without the Lord. Amen. Uh, check your pants and your pocketbook. You'll turn around and go back home and be late for work before you'll go all day without that phone. That's right. That's right. I'm going to get my own amen. I'm going to try that again. Amen. I'm going to start amen to myself. <laughs> if your phone battery goes dead, you are hound a stranger. That's right. That's right. Hey, man. You got a plug. <laughs> you got a. Y'all laughing this morning. Right. Y'all laughing, but I'm serious as a heart attack. Right. You will beg a stranger for something to plug in. Yes, you will, so you can get a little bit more power in your phone. Right. But you'll go all day long and never think about the rapture. Do you ever check yourself to make sure you're ready in case Jesus comes back? How many times during the day do you check yourself to make sure that if he comes back right now, I'm ready. I won't be left by, but some of you sin and I lay down in your bed and go to sleep without fixing it before God Almighty. Some of you walk around weak, dead, without joy, without peace, without hope, and you will not plug yourself in to the power source that is called God Almighty. Last night, 1 o'clock in the morning, when I tried to get through finished praying, that aggravating, I won't lie to you, if I could, I'd bust him so hard. Preacher, you're a preacher. I don't, know. I don't care. If I could hit the devil, but he'd beat the fire out of me because he's... He would. He'd beat the fire because he's strong. He's got more skill than I got. He's got more power than what I got. He can quote more book. <laughs> And I can quote, Lord have mercy, he used to be right on the right hand of God Almighty. I want to tell you something about the devil. He's smarter than you. He's bigger than you. He's stronger than you. He's got more power than you. Well, preacher, you make it sound like I ain't got a chance. You're absolutely right. You don't stand a chance. But the God you serve, the Lord you serve, greater is he that is in you. Let the Lord do your fighting and God will win every time. Boy, last night at one o'clock, messing with me, bothering me, well, I was so sleepy. I started off toward the bed and I stopped. I made up my mind. I didn't say nothing to the devil. I don't talk to him. I just made up my mind. Well, I think I'll just go pray some more. But I'm going to change up my prayer this time. I ain't going to ask for nothing. 
I ain't calling my youngest name. I ain't calling my family's name. I ain't calling the names of the boys I work with. I ain't praying for the church. I'm not praying for America. I'm not praying for myself. I'm not praying for the weather. I'm not praying for the president. I'm not asking or going to talk about anything. I just want to tell you thank you. <laughs> well, I need to start with a thank you for something. You woke me up this morning and I thank you. You took me through the day and I thank you. Lord, I sure have eat good today and I thank you. I got clothes on my back and I thank you. The sink worked every time I turned it on today. And I, every time I turned the key on the car today, it fired up and I thank you. I got shoes on my feet. I got clothes in my clothes. I got food in my refrigerator. My mind working. My hand working. My foot working. And wouldn't you know, I had so many things to thank you for and I hadn't even made it to Calvary yet. And when I made it to Calvary, I wanted to say thank you Lord for shedding your blood and dying for me and writing my name in the the land book of life when I deserve to be burning in hell. But now I'm on. Come on. Well, he must have left. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you if you want to get rid of the devil, cut out your complaining and begin to praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. Amen. When the last time you wrote down the things to be thankful for. I want to give you a warning. Leave yourself some time and get a few sheets of paper. Because if you'll be honest, you got to start at nothing and thank him for everything above that. Preacher, you ain't going to make it to 10. Hebrews 9, 27. How simple is it? God made everything that's why Christians can get so easily blessed they don't have to look at a lot to see God they just have to look at something Amen. hello somebody everybody looking for something but if you know God made everything it don't matter what you see the moon will have the same effect that the sun uh, you catch a brim that long and you're just excited for one that long. Nobody even hearing me right this morning. Uh, a lot of folk driving the sunlight, blinding them on the highway. I'm so sick of this. Uh, God's people. Lord, that's bright, but you brighter. Praise the Lord. Hey, ain't nobody want to hear me this morning. I want to tell you something. When you're looking for God, now some folk can't find him, but if you'll look at something, you'll find who made it. Because God made it all. If chopping your grass and weed eating your dish is a burden to you, why don't you take the time and look at the grass? Notice how God put a seed in the ground. Made that seed die. And when that seed die, put his light on it, put his water on it, and it sprung up out the ground. And you looked at it, and when you weren't paying no mind, you came back, that thing done spread here and spread there, grass everywhere. Who you think done that? I, I promise you, centipede didn't have nothing to do with it. It was made by the hand of God Almighty. It is as simple as it can be. Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto men, Y'all all right this morning? I'm going to challenge you. How many can y'all look at me and smile right there? If you don't mean it, don't do it. It's appointed unto men once to die. I want to tell you something. You can't stay here. That's it, preacher. No, that, that's it. That's as simple as it is. You can't stay here. Number one, God made it all. All things. Number two, 
You can't stay here. But preacher, I exercise. You can lift weights till your humps get lumps. Uh, you, can, you can pump weight till body fat don't even exist on you. But you can't stay here. Right. Yeah, but preacher, I'm going to eat healthy. Uh, you can eat lettuce sandwiches. But I want to tell you, hey, you are leaving this world. You cannot stay here. God Almighty has a, put a time limit on you. He has gave you a certain number of heartbeats. He has gave you a certain number of times that you'll breathe air. And when your time is over, you're leaving this world. Uh, oh Moses what a man doing God wrong God said now I'm not going to let you go in to the promised land but I will let you see it I've now put a mark on you Moses and I'm going to take your life Moses didn't argue that thing because he knew God have said it's time. It's amazing how many folk are trying to find life today. I told y'all, I read a report. I, I can go get it for you. The scientists in the United States of America, our government and different agencies are forking millions upon millions of dollars into a program. A program that they say they will abolish death within the next 10 years. People are pouring their millions into it. Billionaires, forking it over. Putting it in their will. When I die, put me in an ice box. Cut my head off, put my brain in a Ziploc bag, do something with me. Uh, uh, and then one day. Uh, and then one day when you get death figured out. Shoot a shot in me, and I, I was just come up. Uh, my grandpa was not an educated man, but he had enough sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had enough sense to explain to me uh, uh, that one day he was leaving this world, I was leaving this world, Mama was leaving this world, Daddy was going to leave this world. He had enough sense to explain to me uh, that every man, woman, boy, and girl has a time set aside by God Almighty and you cannot stay in this world. You must get prepared to go to the next world. Death will never be conquered by man for man's sin, but the sting of death was conquered by Jesus. They're pouring millions into a program that will never work. You cannot stay here. You're going to die. Is that simple enough? Matthew 25, 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Do you know what that means? Not only can you not stay here, but you're going somewhere forever. When you leave here, you don't get a vote. You don't get a say. You can't change it. You're, watch out. Y'all going to hear this word, and if you don't come here much, you might not have heard it in a while. You're either going to hell. You're either going to hell. I'm ducking because I was told that I need to be careful. Uh, how much I preach on hell uh, that church folk might get offended. I, I might rub some people the wrong way if I don't be careful with that hell thing. Well, I take a different approach. If it bothers you when I preach about hell, why don't you try getting saved one time? And if you if you get born again, you don't care if I preach about hell, sin, murder, it won't bother you because hell will no longer be an issue to you if you're washed in the blood. Mark, when I was lost, that finger of that preacher, I didn't 
I like that rascal sometimes. He was loud and spit too. But I'd sit out yonder in the middle sometimes. And Doug, you still find him that finger. You know what that say to me? If you don't get right with Jesus, you're going to hell. I didn't like that. I'd go sit on the side next service. Somebody had a GPS on me. I'm telling you, and you're going to hell if you don't. Well, times I'd sneak out to church. I didn't even want to hear you preach. But you know, even outside, I'd hear something like this. If I come back, why you running around out here? You going to hell. Preacher, you shouldn't preach hell. I don't argue with folks, but I want to tell you something. A preacher ain't worth five cents in a salt store if he won't preach about a hell fire that is hot. Because if you reject the name of Jesus Christ, your money won't get you out of it. Your name won't get you out of it. The pride got invited to a church to get with the church to pray members out of hell that it died. You can pay me one million dollars an hour I can't pray nobody out of hell you can't pray nobody out of hell the only way you're going to miss hell is by the blood of Jesus Christ 1 Corinthians 15 4 and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Is that simple enough for you? He died. He rose. He died. He rose. Preacher, we need something complicated. I can't do that. He died. He rose. I was told that if I would preach on certain things, I would get folks' attention in the church. Made some fun things in the church. But I'm going to try this different. If you don't like this, something wrong with you anyhow. He died. He rose. He died. He rose. A child of God don't need no more than that. I can go out yonder on the street tomorrow and yell this and nobody will know what I'm talking about. I can say, he died. He rose. Everybody look at me. But I'd walk in the church. He died. He died. He rose. You don't get no more simple than Jesus Christ died. And he rose. You can go visit Buddha's tomb right now. As long as it ain't during prayer season. I googled that too. And you can actually get a ticket. And go get in line. Stand out yonder in the well. And when it's your turn, walk by that bulletproof glass and that glass box. And Terry, when you walk by, you look in there and pieces of Buddha, maybe. And then you can go on home. I prefer my Lord. Amen. You see that first Easter morning when he got up, he didn't leave a tooth behind. He didn't leave a foot. 
There ain't a backbone nowhere. But when Jesus Christ got up on that Easter Sunday morning, he rose by his own power. He rose by his own authority. And all of him arose. And I want to tell you, because he died and because he lives, you and I. Is it simple enough he died and he rose? Let me give you a couple more. Galatians 3.26 For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus made a way. Is that simple enough? Preacher, I need something more deep. No, you don't. Jesus made a way. Romans 14.12 So then every one of us shall give an account of himself you will meet the Lord one day. Can I have your attention? I love for every one of you. Just take a quick second and look up at me and let me put my finger at you. Is that all right? Hang on. I don't look away. I'll point at you. Roy, you look... Every one of you that I pointed at, you have an appointment. You can't get out of it. You can't put it off. You can't change it. Your appointment is to meet the Lord one day. And when you meet him, you will give an account for what you have done with what he gave you in life. And did you know that he gave you a way out of sin? Now, is that simple enough? You're going to meet the Lord one day? Yeah, but preacher, I don't believe in him. You didn't hear me, did you? I said you're going to meet the Lord one day. Yeah, but Oprah, I don't care what your grandma said. You're going to meet the Lord one day. Well, I heard a preacher, well, that preacher, after he meets the Lord, is going to go to hell with you if both of you don't get to know Jesus. You're going to meet the Lord one day, whether you want to or not. Deuteronomy 30, 19, I, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and accursing. Therefore, choose life. You decide your future. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word. Amen. And finally, Revelation 22, 20. Surely. This is too complicated for you. Jesus is coming again. Is that simple enough? Preacher, we need something more exciting to get our attention. Jesus is coming again. You decide right now future. Nobody has the power to make your decision for you. And I want to ask you to stand a second. I'm going to close right here. There was a young man. His daddy was a drunk. One of them rough fellas. Couldn't talk with him. He was hardcore. Hard man. Didn't want to hear the name Jesus. Didn't want nothing to do with the church. His boy got saved. Two years later, the Lord called him to preach. Years and years and years, that boy tried to talk with his daddy about getting right with the Lord. His daddy wouldn't even let him come by the house to see him. 
You can keep your Jesus, Chuck. I don't want to hear it. And if that's all you can talk about when you come to my house, don't come back to my house. Now that's big talk, church. Wow, what a man. That's big talk. But then one day, young man got a phone call. His daddy took sick real quick and in a hurry. They said, son, your daddy is on his deathbed. We, we've got him where he can talk. Uh, but if you want to see him, you better come on. That young man went to where his daddy was. When his daddy had seen his preacher son come to the door, his daddy said, I don't want you here. I've tried to preach simple the last 26 years of my life. And I've tried to preach simple in this church this morning. I don't care about big words, fancy talk. I want to keep it as simple as I can. Vernon, I want you to know you're going to die, you're going to meet the Lord, and you're going to hell, or you're going to heaven. And a way is made that you can go to glory. I want you to know that. Doug, I want you to know. You'll never ever deserve what God Almighty has done for you. He has forgave you. He has saved you. And he has wrote red day. He wrote your day. I want to keep it simple. There's nobody in this church deserves what the Lord's done for you. But here is the simple truth this morning. The Lord has put it in your hand right now. You can step out from your seat, fall on your knees before the Lord and have your heart right. Or you will decide to walk out of that place. That young man said, Daddy, I just want to pray for you. And all of a sudden, that daddy went to scream. He went to yelling to the top of his lungs. He went to kicking on that bed. And he went to scream. Pull me out. Pull me out. Somebody pull me out. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. Somebody please pull me out. His son walked over to that bed and his daddy died instantly. Last words you ever heard his father on earth say was I'm burning in hell. Somebody pull me out. Preacher, you shouldn't preach stuff like that. That's why I ended like this. You know the good news? By the grace of God, You'll never be in that place to be pulled out. But by the grace of Jesus Christ, simply this morning, by you stepping out and coming to the Lord, you can buy a place of place called heaven, bypass it, and heaven be your home. I wonder, had the Lord spoken to you this morning, would you come? Would you take that step? 
Would you answer that call of the Lord this morning in that Holy Ghost as he moves by your seat? The preacher I'm saved, well, if he's come to you, he's got a reason. Don't disobey him and not come this morning. Would you come?